and I'm talking like this is minor hockey more or less. Yep. But even even at the higher levels, if, as long as you as, lo- as long as you make it very clear and concise, makes it that much better, makes it that more approachable. So now that you've taken the burden of, um, of thinking, is it okay to talk to my coach, yep. to ask him questions because he seems angry all the time, right? Yeah, I have a lot of things. And here. and 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 more importantly, coach, reach out first. I was, that's what I was going to say. Is that what you're going to say? That was my first point. Yeah. Okay. Don't wait yes. for the kids to, and, and don't make, wait for them to be a problem or an issue, and say, "Well, you could have came and talked to me." Right. You you make sure that you hey, shake, you know, hey buddy, how you doing? Listen to like the, you're you're their coach, man. It's your responsibility. It's your responsibility, but it's you're coach. their coach. Yeah, and you should want to get the best of them, and you need to be the adult or the professional if you're at the professional levels to reach out first. Yep. You're the leader. Makes everything a good, safe place. Go. You had so, some shit. Yeah, I do. I, I got one I'm going to save to the end, but this is kind of related to this yeah. now. So, um, so first thing, I, I was just thinking while you're talking to how much this relates to parenting too. It's the wow. same thing. Like one on one. It's the same. It's the same thing. Like if you want your kid to talk to you, if you want to know what's going on in your kid's life as they're developing, you have to communicate and you have to initiate the communication. Yep. And that's where, where I was going to make that point. Yeah. As mom and dad, you have to go talk first. You have to let them know that they can talk to you. If you're if you're a distant parent, your kid's not going to think they can talk to you ever, man. It's the same as a coach. So. I want you, I'm going to tell a little story, but I want you to, after I tell my story to kind of walk through maybe like the setup. So if it's the beginning of the season and you're a coach, how can you, how can you, or what can you do to set this up properly from day one, whether like, whether it's team meetings, individual meetings set up in any sense of those types of things, parent meetings or whatever you think is appropriate. I want you to walk through that. But the reason I'm asking you that is because I had an experience and this is what made me start to not like my second coach in junior. So I got traded my third year of junior. I got traded and it was like such a ridiculous situation. I'll save that story for another day, but I get traded and I was having an excellent year. So start, starting off, I think I had 20 something points in the first 12, 13, 14 games, something like that. So I had a really great start. I was one of the league leaders in points at the time, got traded to a team that I didn't know a single person on this team. I didn't know anyone on the team, no players, no coaching, no management, no other human beings that had nothing to do with hockey. I'm going into a completely new place. So I get to this team and my coach on that team, I met with the GM and he got to know me, but my coach never once, never once talked to me about the joining the team process. Other than he might've said, Hey, like, like happy to have you here or something <laughs> like that. Right. So, so to me, if, if I'm the coach, you know what it says, I don't care about you. Exactly. And this is, this was the seed that started me not liking this guy. Because mm-hmm. the first day I got there, what, what he should have done or what any reasonable person would do would be like, okay, never seen you play before. My, our GM, I got traded from a different conference where we didn't play. And the GM was the one that recruited me, who also had never seen me play. So I'm coming onto this team. All they see are my stats yeah. that I'm having a good year. And they assume that they know where I'm going to go. Yeah. And the team that I went to was already a really good team. So mm-hmm. they were already pretty set. So if I'm the coach and I get a new kid coming into a completely foreign environment, he's never been in before, never been away from home, nothing. You come in and I pull this kid in right away. Hey, haven't seen you play before. Like, how do you think you play? Here's what we think. Tell us what you think kind of thing. Because I've never seen you play. Never even seen video of you playing. Where, where am I going to put this kid? So that initial dialogue that didn't happen, that planted the seed to ruin the my dynamic with my coach from day one when I got traded right away and then maybe three months into the season we had our first like one-on-one talk or something and he said I should play like this player who I don't ever play like he compared me to an NHL guy that I don't play like at all right and I had never once thought to play like this yeah well it'd be like right now saying to a kid I want you to play like uh you know, a third, a Brandon Tanev. Yeah. Who the hell is that? That's right. So if that's what you think, you should have communicated that to me day one. This is what I think is going to be your role. How do you play? Like, tell me how you think you play. Cause yeah. this is where I th- can see you fitting in yeah. or whatever. Yeah. And now I'm like, okay, so this guy's trying to figure me out, trying yeah. to see where I play. And now I have a little bit more confidence in being here kind yeah. of thing. And he didn't do that. So right away, now our relationship is tainted to use a term because I don't, I don't like, I don't trust this guy now. Like he's not showing me, he gives a shit about me at all. And he never did my whole time I was there, which was a lot of the reason why I didn't 
end up getting along with this guy. So anyways, there's my long story, but I want you to go into how to not do that and have it <laughs> and have it have a good setup, whether it's well, a, whether it's a 10 year old double A team yeah, no, or a junior just, team. It's the whatever. same everywhere. Yeah. It's the same everywhere for me. It's, it's like and I don't know if I could say there's an actual plan because it's my personality uh, or my conscientiousness when, when it comes to hockey or doing my skills clinics is it is. Listen, I do a skills clinic. Someone comes for the first time, 10th time, whatever. I'm hey, how you doing? Yep. Good to see you again. How's your shot? Like, there's a relationship. He knows that I actually care. Um, the guy, the first time comes out, I'm always like, hey, what's your name? Or good to see you. Thanks for coming out. Just need you to work hard. I might even give him a detail of what the clinic's going to be like. Yep. It, because it's like, okay, this guy's not. It's approachable. Right. I approached you. I don't want a kid to come up to me and say, hey, coach, this is my first time out with you. Mm-hmm. I go, yeah, yeah on the line that's okay well i hate your guts coach i don't want to ever come back and i can tell my parents and hopefully they don't give you another nickel yeah right yeah well it's now you're hitting them with like a feeling of rejection yeah especially like, if the kid if the kid reaches out to come right. talk to you yeah. and you gun them like that it's like yeah so it's always like especially with kids and in the ohl even the young nhlers they're kids yeah you need to be a little bit more mature but your kids just before i go there yep a player's dad called me the other day in the OHL. He said the coach came up to him because he was having doubts about where he stands on the team and am I doing well enough. Okay, so 16, 17 years old. So what do you think that's doing with his head? Because he hasn't had a lot of feedback. What do you think he's doing? He goes, like, I don't know where I yeah, stand. Am I going to get eggs, scratched? Yeah. Am I going to... Coach came up to him when he was working. I said, hey, come here. He was... Playing a, he played a really good couple games. And he told him from the beginning of the year, he goes, like, I really like you. You're going to be a good player. And then, you know, 15 games go by, not really a whole lot of peeps. So kid's like, I don't know where I stand. I'm like, I hope I'm doing good. I hope I don't, hope I don't get scratched. Coach went up to him in the in the, in the the room, work, workout room, and says, hey, you played a really good couple of games. Keep it up. Really, you know, I see you being here and here and here. You know, just keep working hard. And it just, what do you think that – Three minutes did for the kid. Oh, man. Just relieved the pressure valve big time. 100%. Yeah. Now the kid's like, settled, gave him gas. Settled down, yeah. He took a flat tire and just... Yeah. Right? Yeah. Is that funny? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to hold it in. <laughs> I, know, I can see your face. You're like, what's the, what's the noise? <laughs> but he pumped that tire. So yeah. now that guy's he's gonna go for miles. Yeah. He's gonna go for miles. And now if you even if he gets beat down a little bit over the next couple of games, yeah, he's still got some some gas hey, in the tank. Hey. And he goes, Okay, no, the coach said that I did really well. Or why did I do really well? Maybe the coach told me or I don't know, but why did I do really well? I did certain things. Oh, I gotta do what I kept doing. He's got something to yep. measure his value on the team. But if the coach just walks by it, doesn't say hi or just says hi, the kid's in doubt. Yep. So he just added life to this kid's uh, um, whatever. I don't know what the word well, is. Well, yeah, and, and this is what we were saying last week when we started. It was more the player perspective of player, you need to go talk to your coach. Mm-hmm. But if you're a coach and you haven't talked to a player in a long time, you guys haven't had a dialogue, like, again, you're the one with the responsibility to your guys. You're supposed to be the leader. Like, you can't say, well, why didn't you ever come talk to me? You're the coach, man. Go, You yeah. go initiate it. Or yeah. even if you go get him, be like, hey, come talk to me. Hey, how come how come, uh, how come? we haven't talked in a bit? Like, what's going on? Yeah. I want you to, you know you can come talk to yeah. me, right? Like, don't be afraid to come. And yeah. you can reset that mental framing because the kids' wheels are always spinning, man. I remember it all through junior. I'm sure you remember it. Your wheels are always spinning as a kid because you think in sh- such short time frames. So if something's going wrong, you start to think, oh, I'm no good. Or am I going to get scratched? Am yeah. I going to get traded? Why am I not getting more of this? Why am I? Yeah. And you talk Coach for, hates me. I know, and you talk... That conversation was probably a minute and a half, two minutes. Yeah, let's say and it was the total of three. Yeah, right? doesn't matter. That's all it took, and this kid is settled right back down now. He okay, feels okay, good. He's got okay. some confidence again okay, and, okay. and whatever, you know? And that's... So, Dad, guess what? Exactly. Exactly Charlie that. does it to me. Yeah. Dad. George, text him. Charlie. Yeah. Da, 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 da. Yeah. At night. Pull him in the office. Hey, Charlie, how you feeling? What do you think? What do you need to work on? That's like, yeah. man, that's gold. Yeah. Okay. So I give me. Play for you. So so give me 